You've laid out your paper. You've done your research. You've created your citations and everything you expect to use in your paper. Now you're ready to roll or write. There are three different ways you could credit these sources in your paper. First, and most straightforward, you could use a direct quote from the article. The parenthetical citations for these are the most complete. Because of that, I will use these examples the most. The basic format is author, comma, date, comma, page number. Second is to use the author's name in your narrative. Often you'll find that it flows better. This is especially effective if the author has authority, such as an expert in the field or on a government website. This is called a narrative citation. You still will need the date. And third, you could paraphrase, incorporating the author's ideas in your paper, but using your own words. You could expand them with ideas of your own or compare them with ideas from other authors. You still need to give the date in an in-text citation. And yes, it follows the author immediately, even though it's in the middle of a sentence. As always, when in doubt, consult the APA handbook. With each of their citation examples in the seventh edition, they give you a parenthetical citation and a narrative citation. All of these are called in-text citations. Why? Simple, they're right there in the text. The main purpose of an in-text citation is to lead you to the full citation in the reference list. In case you're wondering, yes, you could use all the information in your text, so you wouldn't need a narrative citation. It still leads you to the right citation in the reference list. You might have noticed that I used the page number in some examples, but not in others. I thought you needed a page number, you might say. Well, yes and no. If you are using a very specific part of the article you're citing, and especially if you're using a direct quote, you do need a page number. In those situations, if you don't have a page number, you must find another way to make it easy for the reader to find your quotation. Use a section name if you have one. If necessary, you might need to count the paragraphs. A label could work for a picture or a graph. And a timestamp on an audio or video recording. However, if you're paraphrasing, using the author's ideas but not exact words, you can probably do without the locator. When you paraphrase, using the author's ideas and incorporating them with your own, it's often not necessary to give location. As always, your instructor is the authority. If you're told to use a page number or other location identifier, do it. The basic concept of in-text citations is pretty simple. You use the first element of the full reference citation, comma, and the date, comma, and possibly the location. These elements can be in the text or in parentheses. So why do you need to watch this video? Because like so many things, there are exceptions. We're now going to explore these exceptions so you have an idea of how they work. By the way, in parenthetical citations, authors and editors are treated the same. Here's our standard citation for one author. Notice that you don't even need the author's initials, unless in your references, you have items by two different authors with the same last name. How are you going to differentiate them? Here, you will use the initials. What happens if you have two authors on the same publication? Easy, you just add the second one. Notice that you use an ampersand, not the word and. Three authors, even easier. All you need is the first one, et al, along with the date. What is et al? It's an abbreviation for the Latin et alii, meaning and others. But in my mind, it's just and all. You do need that period though, since al is an abbreviation for alii. No matter how many more authors you add to the full citation, et al will cover it. A company, or organization, use the full name as shown on the title page. 
don't try to shorten. There's one other tricky variation on author's names. What if you came across a great quote from Albert Einstein? It's just what you need to make your point. But you got it from a book by Alice Caliprice and Freeman Dyson. You can't really give Caliprice and Dyson credit for it. What do you do? APA recommends that you find the original source and quote from that. But if that's not possible or not practical, it's an indirect quotation. Einstein, comma, 1929, comma, as cited in Caliprice and Dyson, comma, 2010. That pretty much covers it for authors. Or does it? We've covered the authors that you have, but what about authors you don't have? Most of the time, you can find an author. It might be a group author like the American Dental Association or Merriam-Webster. But sometimes websites and journal articles really don't have any author information that you can find. Do you remember me saying that you use the first element in the citation? If the first element is an article title, you'll use quotation marks around the title, even though there were no quotation marks in the full reference citation. If your first element is a book title, you'll use italics. Notice that the title becomes title case, even though it was sentence case in the full reference. Now we're on to the second part of your in-text citation. Do you remember what that is? The date, right. In APA, the date is always second. APA is usually used in the sciences and social sciences, and in those fields, it's important to know the date. If you found conflicting information about skin cancer, one written in 1950 and one in 2014, which one would you find more convincing? That's an extreme example, but it illustrates that it's important to know the date when you evaluate the data. For your in-text citations, the date is just the year. In your references, your date could be the year, or it could include the month, or even the day. But don't worry about that in the in-text citations. There are a few, a very few, exceptions to this rule. Let's say the original article was republished. This could be a journal article that was compiled into a book, or an essay included in an anthology, or an historical document on the web. In this case, you use both dates. And if there is no date, you still need to have something in the date field. If your reference says N period, D period for no date, your in-text citation should also say N period, D period. In this particular case, we use the retrieval date in the reference to give it some time frame, but that would not be used for the in-text citation. Your source is unrecoverable. This could be something from your class lecture, an email, a personal interview, a radio or television show. If your reader can't access the information, it's a non-recoverable source. But it's still a source and should be credited. This is the one time that you'll want a complete date. This is also the one time you'll use the author's initials before the surname. Personal communications use only an in-text citation. They are not listed in the references. There are, of course, many types of citations that we haven't covered here. If you come across something that confuses you, check the APA publication manual or consult your friendly librarian.